Hey everybody, welcome to the Founders Mentality. I'm Josh Feedy, your host. I'm super excited to introduce my guest today because this is somebody that's been a personal mentor of mine, a friend, he's been a customer of mine. I've known him for many, many years and I wanted to specifically have him on this time of year because this is the time of year that we all want to do better and give more in our lives and I don't know anybody that gives as much as this guy does. And so that's why I wanted to have him in. I think you're all going to uh, want to make him your best friend as soon as this episode is done as well. So let me just introduce Bob Gardner over here. I'm going to have you do a quick introduction. Give us a little elevator pitch on what you do. Oh, elevator pitch. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Bob Gardner. I'm the founder of Gardner Builders. Um, I'm a dad to four kids. Um, Joseph, the youngest. Yep. Monica, at Peter, and Adam. Yep. Married to Mary Jo. We have a dog named Misty. Yep. Um, started Gardner Builders, uh, it's nine years ago, October 1st of 2010. Mm -hmm. And so we call ourselves a hospitality company that happens to be in the commercial construction business. Uh, we like to be able to solve, uh, you know, look at what the customer's drive is mm -hmm. um, and then put together a team that can deliver on those expectations, but then honors uh, the ecosystem of work that gets done. So all of the inputs into that, uh, into that process, yep. um, we work really hard to make sure that we honor the folks that do the work. This is exactly why I wanted to have you on this podcast. There, you're the first guest that I've ever asked to give the quick elevator pitch. And you started out by telling me about your family. I think that says a lot about you as who you are as a person. Most people um, go straight into what their business does. The family conversation comes up later in the podcast, right? It's clear that that's a really important thing to you in why you do what you do. Um, that's actually, and I've told you this story before, that's actually exactly why I made it uh, a goal to meet you. Um, when, I first, uh, when I first came across you, we were working on a project together, um, separately, but together for Wolf Ridge Environmental Learning Center. Your, your team was doing all the build. Um, I was doing some web development work for them. And we were at the uh, groundbreaking ceremony, and I was just watching you interact with all of the people that work for you, and how you knew the names of all the children of all the people that work for you. And I just thought, oh my God, that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's a leader we need to be celebrating right now, right? So the way you just started the show is just so perfectly uh, on brand uh, for you, right? And so, Thank you for that. Um, I want to talk about a whole bunch of things sure. because, look, one of the other reasons I wanted to have you on is I've had a lot of tech founders on. And one of the things I told you was I want to have you on because there's a lot more than just technology companies in Minnesota. And you were very fast to correct me and say, well, that technology is actually one of our differentiators it is. at our business. So let's dive into that a little bit more. But before we even get to that, nine years, that's a long time. What, what were those early days like? What were you doing before you decided you wanted to start Gardner Builders? Um, testing, okay. uh, experiencing, mm -hmm. being a sponge, yep. um, observing, really paying attention. So I, I had a, a long road. Yeah. Um, didn't come from a whole lot, uh, except for a, a loving family, but, yeah. uh, but honestly experienced quite a bit of, um, you know, Sometimes you just don't know what you want to do. I, I knew early on I had a passion for construction, but mm -hmm. I also knew early on innately that I um, had this ability to connect with people yeah. and connect with people for who they are, not just for how is it going to help me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I've always, I've always done that naturally. Yeah. Um, it just took me until, until I was in my 30s or 40s to actually realize that it could, it could help me create uh, right. an organization. Well, and you, you, you almost say that in a way like you, like, like you shouldn't have waited that long, but I mean, that's very normal, right? I mean, most of the studies out there show that most people don't do anything real significant in their lives until about 37, 38, right? right. So is that kind of the turning point? I, I, I don't want to ask your age, but is that kind of the turning point? Oh, I'll tell you, I'm 50. I'll be 51 okay. in February. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, started when I was 42. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've, I moved to Minnesota, met a girl from Minnesota, Mary Jo and I met in San Francisco and she grew up here and um, we were married and then not long after uh, we ended up moving back here. Yeah. Um, and I had a journey of multiple places here and just uh, made observations that um, you experience, uh, 
you experience how certain organizations work and you yeah. realize that there are things that you, uh, if you had the opportunity to do them, would do them in a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so when I left my previous gig and started Gardner Builders, it was one where I said, I want to create a place where I would love to work. Mm -hmm. um, and those around me surround myself with people who are really good at things that I'm not good at mm -hmm. um, and a place where they would love to work, where they would come to work and feel valued yeah. and challenged and love to be there. Yeah. Um, and that is truly, it's our only goal as a company. Yeah, I love that. So, I mean, one thing that I talk to a lot of younger uh, founder curious people or people that have started businesses when they're in even their 20s, right, um, is don't be afraid to wait to chase that dream until you have a little bit more direct industry experience in what you're trying to do. And it sounds like that's kind of the course you took, but what was what was kind of that driving moment where you realized, I can't, I can't keep working for other people. I have to start my own business now. I think... There's a couple of things. Yeah. One, it it's the, I don't know if it's chops, but it's the, the level of experience where you realize that when you're talking, people pay attention yep. and they're actually hung on your words right? Um, because you actually know what you're talking about. And to your point, that impatience of a youngster, yeah. um, you know, some, there are founders out there that are in their twenties that are, mm -hmm. that are crushing it. Mm -hmm. Um, and they might be old souls, mm -hmm. um, but I think by and large, the ability to learn your craft yep. and feel confident in that craft and feel confident in advising others that this is the right way to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, with us, people are investing millions upon millions of dollars in new office or new building. Right. right. And so um, it takes this level of confidence and competence that, mm -hmm. that they will put their trust in you. Yeah. And so it takes this level of, hey, I'm here and I'm somebody that can back it up right. and you can trust me. Right. I mean, and that is a big leap of faith, right? I mean, those contracts, you're right. They're, they're very, very big. And I mean, I've seen you guys go up against some of the biggest construction firms nationally <laughs> and win. How do you do that? What is the difference yeah. that you guys are able to win those deals? Well, it's, it's not just winning. I think yeah. you take this approach that we, we look at not really competition. We look at how can we impact a project and, and be a differentiator? Mm -hmm. How can we best be involved and understand the spirit of what the client is trying to accomplish, whether it be Wolf Ridge, mm -hmm. whether it be Dayton's yep. um, or others, right? We work with nonprofits. We work with for-profits. Mm -hmm. They all have a business objective and, yeah. and it's incumbent upon us to actually understand what that business objective is because anybody can build it. Right. I mean, there's, there are, this is, we're blessed with really, really good craftspeople and builders in yeah. this market, the yeah. Twin Cities market. Um, so anyone can build it. It's how do you, well do you understand what the objectives are yep. and how do you put yourself in a position to actually affect and impact the outcomes by knowing what the, what the desired outcomes are. Right. So my assumption would be that in the early days of Gardner Builders that you were you were the person that did the business development, that did all the fact finding, that did all of the documentation, all the strategy, like laid that groundwork. How, how involved are you in that portion of it today? Well, we're, I mean, less involved, yeah. less involved. Um, I'm involved. It, it's funny because I get involved in just about, it doesn't matter whether it's a, you know, whether it's a, a 5,000 square foot project or a, yeah. or a hundred thousand square foot project. Right. If I can help, yep. I'll help. Yep. Um, and so I get, you know, I, there's, there's stuff that takes my attention. We've got offices in Milwaukee and, and Duluth mm -hmm. and are expanding our national footprint presently. But, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm careful to make sure that I'm giving the attention where it needs to be given. Yeah. I'm asking that reason uh, that question for two reasons. One of them is a little selfish, right? So one of them is just to give you a quick fact check, right? Yeah. You said that you hire people that are smarter than you to enable them to do what they, they do right. best, right? And I believe that when you say that. And I ask that question, that's exactly what you're doing right now. The second reason I'm asking you that is because I'm trying to learn myself how to be the CEO that I need to be. Right. I'm trying to surround myself with people that are smarter than me every single day. 
I have grown so used to wearing so many hats and being ultimately responsible for so many things that I'm having a hard time letting go. But I know that at a certain point, probably before nine years, but at a certain point, no. I'm going to have to start letting go of certain so things. So I early on adopted a mantra of to grow, I have to let go. And this is mm -hmm. the curse of the founder is mm -hmm. that nobody can do it like you. Nobody sees it the same way as you do. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? That's true. Yeah. But it's also kind of bullshit, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because yeah. if you don't trust other people to make decisions and, and give them a safe place to fail, yeah. then your organization will only grow as much as you are willing to let it grow. Yeah. Um, and if you can't let go, it will be constricted by your inability to let it grow. Yeah. I love that. Give them a safe place to fail, right? I mean, we, we should not expect everybody to win every single time they go out there, right? No, Sometimes you, you don't out. learn, right? You don't learn if you don't fail. You absolutely don't learn not. if you don't strike out. Yeah, absolutely not. So, I mean, what I look for and what I would assume you look for as well is people that will learn when they strike out. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people, when they do fail, um, it turns into the blame game. This wasn't me. I, I didn't miss here. I did everything they asked me to do. There's nothing to learn from this. No, right. there, there probably is. You better dig a little. There, and not my terms, yeah. uh, but but I, I like the philosophy of um, that's a victim language. Yeah, you can't you can't just say, oh, it wasn't me, or come up with ten thousand excuses. Right. Uh, we have a mantra of if you if you see it, you own it. Yep. Um, and so you have to you have to be able to own where you've made mistakes because the only way you can move forward is if you acknowledge that that there was an issue mm -hmm. and you're you're able to then say this is where we misstepped here's yeah. how we're going to correct it and here's yeah. how we're going to move forward from that to make it a better experience than it was previously well and i would just assume that with your background in construction some of these lessons of if you see it, you own it are probably life or death that that just kind of like find their way into the business. Right. Because, I mean, some of the things that you may see on a construction site that that could be serious if you see something so, you don't know. It. it is life and death. Safety right. is paramount. And right. so we, we do like it's anybody who works on our team is yeah. empowered to say, yep. I see it. Stop. Yep. Halt. Yep. Let's correct this. Yep. Let's ask the right questions. But it also is as simple as you know, dusty footprints, right? Yeah. So you're in a high rise and, uh, and three or four trades just walk out of the job site. Right. And there's a trail of crumbs of dusty footprints from here to the elevator. Right. And if nobody says anything, it's just going to continue to perpetuate. And right. so it's, uh, it's a, it's a team effort to make sure and, yeah. and including trade partners. Yeah. Our trade partners need to understand that we are guests in every building that we walk into and we mm. get paid to be there. Yeah. We don't pay to be there. Right. Um, right. And so the folks who pay to be there don't expect to see footprints or loud and noisy disruption. Right. While they're trying to run a business. OK, there's a couple other places I want to go with this that I just I can't wait to just hear your 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 reaction to. So. The number one thing that I'm most impressed with, with you as a leader and your company, um, is how much your company gives back, okay? And it's clear that giving back is something that's really important to you as a person. It's something that's really important to the people that work for you. The thing that you've done really well, at least from what I've seen, is that the people that work for you understand why you're giving back. They understand that there is a greater good to this, right? Where did, where did that all come from? Where did this, because not every company gives back. Not every company does. Right. So where did that drive come from? And, and, and where does the drive to continue to support that mission come from within the company? Okay. I want to correct one thing you said okay. first. Do it. Uh, nobody works for me. Okay. <laughs> they work with me. This is why you're right? a better leader than me. They I work, love that. They work, nobody works okay. for me. They work with me yep. um, because I have a job to do. They mm -hmm. have a job to do. Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't do my job, I'm letting them down. If they don't do their job, they're letting me and the, the rest of the organization down. Yep. So, so it's a clear, you know, we work together yep. and we have, we have things to accomplish. Yeah. And we all rely on one another to get that done. Yep. Um, giving back. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, I'm so we're blessed to have what we have. Yeah. Yeah. 
and you just have to give it back. Then. You you have to. I mean, does it come from your upbringing? You yeah, I didn't. Um, yeah, we. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. You reflect back. My mom passed away. It'll be 12, 11 years ago now okay. in January. Um, okay. And when she passed away, she was she was a pack rat. She kept everything. Yeah. And I look back, and um, you reflect on your you know in your teen years when you're a punk yeah. and you expect like. I want this, I need to have this, I need to have that. Yeah. And, you know, I look back at her tax, she kept every tax record. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that my mom and dad or stepdad ever, like when I was growing up, never made more than 28 grand yeah. a year with four kids. Yeah. Um, How did they do that? Yeah. With grace. <laughs> right. With stature, with just keep plugging away yeah. and and with love right with yeah. spreading amazing love yeah understanding that we are you know we're we're blessed to be to have what we have yeah right and there are way many there are other people that have less yep and it's an obligation to us to be able to help if we have abundance to be yeah. able to be able to give back i love that i mean i 100 percent agree and i wish i saw I wish that I saw more companies doing what you guys do in the way that you do it. And I've been able to be a part of it just on the outside as a contractor, right? That's part of how we originally met is you were putting together um, the Gardner Gives events with Jessica and the marketing team, right? Um, and that's where I really started to see firsthand exactly how important it is to the company to be giving back. And I just love that, right? Because that's that is what we should all be aspiring to do, right? We should all be aspiring to get to a certain level in our life where we're comfortable and our family's needs are taken care of and we can now start taking care of other people as well, right? And moving, bringing other people with us, right? Right, and, and it, you know, you said something earlier, but it's my mantra for 2020 is mm -hmm. hashtag do better. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just do better. I mm -hmm. don't think we're doing enough to give back. Right. Um, I would like to be able to do more. And it's not just monetary, right? Yeah. Monetary is in sometimes a convenient way to do it. Um, you're not engaged. You're not like yeah. seeing where the pain is. Yep. Um, and Wolfridge is a perfect example of I've been a chaperone with all four of my kids. Yeah. And each and every time, um, the very first time I went, it was eye-opening to me that there are there are certain kids that that don't ever have to worry about where their food's coming from yep. where their you know where their love or care is coming from yep. and you get up at Wolfridge and you realize there are there are kids that don't have that home life yep. and they need this more than they need it more than my kids need it they need it more than I need to be have a great experience as a chaperone yeah um, and I took the, that upon me every single time to pull chaperones aside and say, listen, assume you don't know their stories, yeah. but assume their story is not good. Right. Yeah. And how can you make this a phenomenal experience yeah. that that kid will remember for a lifetime? Yeah. I love that. And anyone listening that's going, what is this Wolf Ridge? Just look up Wolf Ridge uh, environmental environmentallearningcenter.org it's it's a long web address um, but it's a great it's a great place my kids school went this year um, for their first time yeah imagine being a chaperone out out in nature with yeah. 150 kids right and yeah <laughs> well and you know and then you look at kids from the city a lot of those kids uh, have never even been out in the woods like that right. for a whole week right so it's just go be a kid just go enjoy being a kid. That's really what yeah. it's all about there. It's a really fascinating place. But also learning and being able to believe in yourself yeah. by making strides that you normally wouldn't get to, yeah. to make. So Get up on the ropes course, right? Yeah. Do all the, you know, uh, what is the compass? What do they call it with the compass? Orienteering. Orienteering, yeah. right? Go get lost in the woods yeah. and find your way back yep. in, a, in a place that you've never been, right? It's great stuff, and it's and it's great uh, learning for kids down the road as well, right? I mean, this is where they start realizing yeah. how to actually use their mind for something other than just video games, right? Yeah, and, and that they can do it themselves, right? Or, and that they can do it with a team, yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's even more important to understand that um, you're not in it on your own, and that yeah. you ha you have to have a team with you to succeed, yeah. So one of the things that I've never asked you that I really wanted to just 
put you on the spot and ask you. Uh, neither one of us had uh, the most amazing financial upbringing as children. But it sounds like we both had amazing parents. And it sounds like we both had a good childhood, which is great. In your wildest dreams, did you ever imagine that you would be where you're at today financially with the business that you have, with the things you're able to do? Did you ever imagine that was going to be you? Yep, I did. Okay. I did. Tell me about that. Um, and I, I don't know. I, um, back to parents. Yeah. You know, my mom always said, you can do anything you set your mind to. Yeah. And, but it doesn't come easy and you got to put work in to yeah. get there. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you have a plan, get after it yeah. and, uh, and then be smart about how you approach it. Yeah. Um, and honor people along the way. Yeah. I love how you answered that because I don't think most people would have the courage to just step out and say that though. That is the truth about most successful people, right? You have to see it first and then you have to believe it yourself or it is never going to happen. Right. And, and you have to see it through. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Right. It's not just believing blindly in your faith and in yourself, but like actually doing the things you have to do to get there. That's the hard part for most people. Yeah. So saying that doesn't yeah. mean that I don't have some like a lot of along the way going. Yeah. Do I really belong here? <laughs> right. I've, I've had a vision of getting here yeah. and there's in you never arrive. Right. right. But, um, yeah. you know, there's there's uh, little hints of like imposter syndrome jump in and yeah. go, you know, you know, you're doing things right. But. Right. Should you really be sitting here? Right. Even today, those creep in? Yeah, even today. Well, so for anyone listening, I'm sorry. Those thoughts of imposter syndrome are just going to keep coming, right? I think, I think that we all have that. We all are very aware of that right now, especially in the beginning of starting a business. You feel very incompetent in almost every room that you're in, right? Like, I should not be here. Right. Um, but you hope that you get to a certain point where it goes away. But who knows? Maybe even Jeff Bezos walks in a room every once in a while and goes, what am I doing here? I think that anybody with with humility and yeah. with uh, self reflection realizes that yeah. um, you, there could be a fork in the road and you could be sitting somewhere different. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Things change so incredibly fast. That's something that you know I've experienced in in my own personal life is just how fast things can go from great to absolutely horrible, back to better than they've ever been. Right, um, and. That's why whenever I run into somebody that's fallen upon hardships, the first thing I usually say is just wait, right? Just give it a little bit of time because sometimes you, that's all you need. Right. And if you stay focused on where you want to go, what you want to be, what you want to do, as long as you stay focused and you put in the work to get there, you will get there. Just so I, I think with that, yeah, it takes an element of positivity. Yes. Uh, and superpower by the way mm -hmm. um positivity is pos your superpower one, one of them okay right optimism <laughs> and and positivity yeah w woo is another one what is woo woo, <laughs> woo. <laughs> right okay it is all right I, but that with that it's yeah. you you also have to be humble right yeah but, and you can't be so pollyanna ish that positivity outshines everything right yeah. um yeah but the the so in hard times, yep. it takes this, like this centering of positivity that says, "Yeah, this sucks. This yeah. is hard. Yep. But we'll get through this." Yep. Um, and positivity doesn't make things go away. No. So you have to be able to believe that things can get better, and yep. you have to know that that you can take baby steps to make it better. It's not going to happen yeah. overnight. Yeah. Let's talk real quickly about some of the. Um, other things that you've that you do um, with with the the place that you're at in your life right now, you don't just give to nonprofits, but you're also an investor. You've invested in a handful of companies. I didn't know this about you until recently. I didn't know that you were an investor, and you've invested in some really cool companies that are actually doing really good things. I right? didn't know I was an investor either. I well, <laughs> but you are now. But I am. Yes. Yeah. And and I think that. That's something, look, I, I think this is one of the many similarities that I personally think we have, right? 
my end game is that I get to a level financially that I can give back. And part of where I want to give back is to charities, right? Yep. Part of where I want to give back, though, is to other founders that are starting out, that have a great idea, that just need some funding to get their dream off the road. Because this is hard. And sometimes all you need is a little bit of extra funding to get there. Yep. Right? And so it's incredible that you're, you're, you've been able to put yourself in this position where you can do those sorts of things. And I think that you understand just from the conversations we've had that none of these things are for sure, right? Not, and none so, of them are for sure. So many times investing is like a charity anyways, right? I mean, <laughs> there may not be any not financial return. Them, right. right. But talk about this a little bit. Like, how did you decide to get into investing? What was the first investment that you ever made in a business? Well, Gardner Builders. <laughs> that was sweat equity. One that wasn't your own. Right. Yeah. Um, Man, I don't know the first one. When did you start investing? How many years uh, back? Recently. Just yeah. recently, last okay. few years. Okay. Um, How many businesses do you think total you've invested in at this point? Ten. Okay. What are the similarities between these businesses? Are they... Uh, uh, individuals that I personally believe in. Okay. Yeah. And okay. quite quite honestly, like, do I get the tech on every one of them? Do mm -hmm. I get the, like, what they're trying to accomplish? I think first and foremost to me, it's... It's do I connect? Yeah. Do I connect with you? Yeah. Do I believe that you have what it takes yep. to go do special things? Yep. And that that you're not just going to take the money and sit right. there and go, yeah. Ah, well, it didn't work out. Yeah. So I'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Do I think that the folks are willing to put the sweat equity in that really takes to get something going? Um, and do I believe in them intrinsically as a human being that that they're going to go get it? Right. Right. Um, and so not everything's going to work out. Um, yeah. not everything's going to work out. Uh, yeah, but you go into it with the right mindset, right? So, I mean, typically speaking, then your investments that you've made more seed stage than or pre seed stage investments, most likely uh, they're var they're variable. Some are, mm -hmm. um, equity funds, some are, yeah. um, st like st startup. Yeah. Cidery. Yeah. Um, yep. The cidery one is the one that I'm really interested in. Yeah. I need to get out there. So they're open for business right now? Yeah, number 12 Cider House. They're, okay. they're just here in the North Loop. I, I need to go check them out because I love cider. Two doors down. Go get it. From here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where specifically are they out here? What What's the intersection they're on? They're, you know? uh, they're by the Holiday Station. Okay. Kinda. Oh, yeah. That's really close. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go check that out because I'm not a big beer drinker, but I love cider. Cider. They make phenomenal cider. Okay. My only other uh, cidery, is that what you call them, a cidery? Yeah, cidery. Uh, in Minnesota what has been Freewheel for years. I love Freewheel. Cool. Um, so I'm definitely going to check this one out. Dog friendly? Dog friendly. Yeah, good. For sure dog yeah. friendly. Yeah, so in the summertime, bring your yeah. dog. Just sit out there and have some Go cider. Go have a pizza, drink yeah. some awesome cider. And yeah. No, I, I love it. And, I, and, and your response is perfect, right? In the stages that you're investing in, you do want to be investing in the founder, right? I don't think you do need to understand the tech, right? Um, the investors that um, I have in my business, I would say that the majority of them understand the technology that, that we're building right now. But what I will say is that the first investor that came in, um, it was absolutely just based on him knowing me and just feeling like you're going to do something great with this, so here's enough money for you to chase this one, right? right? And that was really, really uh, uh, an eye-opening experience for me. Right. Um, and every time an investor comes into my business, it's another eye opening ex experience for me because I just go, it's kind of like when you walk in a room even today and you go, what, what am I doing in this room? Right. There's when people hand me money, I sit back and I go, why does this person, why is this person able, willing to give me money? Right. Why am I deserving of this? Right. There's so many startups in this town that are struggling to raise funds. Why is this person giving me these funds? And you, and then it's just more fuel in the fire to prove yourself to them, right? right? And make sure that it is successful, or at least if it isn't successful, that you did absolutely everything you could do to make it as successful as it could be. Because they're hoping that you go out there and have that same question about your clients. Yeah. Why is this person willing to yep. you know, invest in this business yep. and impact their business yeah. by, you know. Exactly. I think the other thing about not understanding the tech is one thing understanding what the deliverable is from yeah. the technology. So yeah. if it's a technology investment, yeah. understanding what the outcome is and understanding how that, that technology will impact yeah. the business and the outcomes of the business yeah. uh, for me is something that, uh, 
that drives me. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I love that. So we got to wrap this up real soon here because we're, we're a little bit over time. I try to keep these podcasts under 30 minutes. Right on. Uh, because, you know, that's most people's average drive in. It's already been 30 minutes. It's already been 30 minutes. <laughs> it goes really, really fast. It's really easy, right? Yeah. So um, what are you most looking for? I mean, this is, I'm going to release this or a little earlier than, than I typically do because I would have been waiting until the first to release this one, but I want to get this out before the holidays here because I think people are going to be bored looking for things to do uh, over the holiday right. break and they can just <laughs> listen to my podcast. There you and go. Perfect. So when they see the episode on the video, they'll see I'm wearing my favorite Christmas shirt with my buddy Ralphie on it. Um, and now it'll make more sense to them. Right. So, but, uh, with that theme of here comes the new year, what are you most looking forward to next year, either personally or professionally? I don't even care. What are you most looking forward to next year? I, you know, there's so many things. Yeah. So many things. Doing better, right? Mm-hmm. Hashtag do better. Yeah. Um, doing better on lots of fronts. Uh, giving back. Yeah. Um, I think we're, we're exploring some really interesting things with our business. Mm-hmm. Um, growing certain segments of it mm-hmm. that I... Um, I joke with our team quite a bit. I, I feel like we're sitting on a rocket that hasn't started its engines yet. Right. Um, yeah. And and so I think uh, giving folks the opportunity to go do things like special things. Yeah. Um, because back back to that, we all have a job to do. Yeah. Um, but we're providing opportunities for individuals to shine their light. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I'm really excited about that opportunity to watch those folks grow yeah. and do amazing things. Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully doing more of that yeah. uh, in the years to come. That's great. So we didn't talk about this yet. And if you don't want to make this public yet, just tell me and we'll edit this out. It's fine. But I know that you're working on a second business right now, right? Yep. Can well, we couple. talk about this a little bit? Sure. Because what I want to make a point of is, was was Gardner Builders the first company you ever started? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so many things were stacked against you for Gardner Builders to get to the point that it is at today, nine years later, yeah. right? I mean, 90% of the businesses that started on the day you started disappeared four years ago, right? So it took a lot to get it to this point. And now you're working on some other businesses that you're starting. Tell me about those just a little bit. Well, there, there are other, the other businesses are, there's opportunities galore, right? Mm-hmm. And so what we're doing without getting a super specifics is, yeah. is we have taken folks that we've worked with in the past that are, um, that are special at what they do yeah. um, and giving them the platform and opportunity to go do amazing things. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, Totally outside of what we're doing at Gardner Builders. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, now you're going to just start starting more businesses, advising on more businesses, investing in more businesses. I mean, this is going to be The potential is there. And again, you see people that you believe in and you know that they have like just, but for one, they need to believe in themselves. Yeah. And when when they see that you believe in them, they're going to go out and do everything they can to, to make great things happen. Yeah. Um, and so it's a, it's a different mentality when mm-hmm. you're vested versus an employee. Yeah. Um, and I think these folks are just going to do pretty amazing things. Yeah. Okay. So before we end this podcast, anybody listening through, um, that is maybe sitting back in their office going, you know, maybe I should be considering Gardner Builders for our next project. What would you say is an ideal sort of client fit for you? What, what kind of, what kind of work are you looking for at Gardner Builders? Well, it's less the kind of work Mm -hmm. and more, uh, the kind of client that Mm -hmm. we like to work with. Okay. And we, we have, you know, we've put together, we run our business on traction. Yep. Um, and our VTO vision traction, traction organizer has our demographic, our geographic and our psychographic, and it's different for yeah. each office but but the psychographic doesn't change and the psychographic is who we want to work with and yeah. the, we we say uh, we want to work with folks who appreciate the value that we bring mm-hmm. uh, appreciate how we approach p- projects mm-hmm. um, and they understand the impact on their business and they're willing to pay for it yeah yeah um, if you're just looking for you know the low number if you're just looking for somebody to just come in and bang it out as cheaply as possible, we're probably not the right choice. Right. Because 
we're going to put a lot of care uh, and energy into making sure we understand your business objectives. Yeah. And your business objective might be get this done fast and do it as inexpensively as possible. Yeah. We can work within those parameters. Yeah. Um, but we're not going to do it for free. And yeah. And I don't. I don't think anybody should. Hmm. One thing, and I would like to kind of end on this if we can. Yeah. Um, back to the ecosystem. For us, it's a business objective for the clients. Mm -hmm. It's our employees first. So we start with our employees, and they have to feel valued and challenged, right, and love to be there. Likewise, our trade partners. The industry calls them subcontractors, but but our trade partners are hugely vital to the success of any project we work on. And so we want them to be successful. We want them to be able to make money. We plan our work with them. They're the experts in their field. Yeah. And then likewise with design partners, they can't draw every detail. The clients won't pay them to draw every single detail. So our job is to, is to understand the spirit of design, understand what's in two dimensions and how it gets built. We get to interpret that and and work tightly with them as a team. And at the end of the day, if we're all doing that well, we're high fiving with the client and saying, let's do this again. (laughs) Right. So it's perfect place to end this one. Thank you so much for being on this podcast with me. This is, I mean, this is something that I've wanted to do. We've been talking about this for months now, finding time to have you in. Um, This is something that I've really, really wanted to do because I think personally that you are somebody that brings a tremendous amount of value to this world. And I am one of those people that if I know somebody or if I get to experience something that I think other people could benefit from, I like to try to share that in however I can. And so I I hope that everybody listening um, took a lot of your mantras around leadership and how you just conduct yourself and your and your how your business conducts itself and and how you treat your employees to heart because I wish more businesses would do more of what you do at your company. I think we'd be in a much better world if they did. So thank you for being on, Bob. And thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll be back in two weeks, just like we always do. I'm not going to tell you who the next guest is yet because I I haven't really settled it in yet. But um, thanks, everybody, for joining, and I'll talk to you again later. Bye.